Welcome back guys. On this video, we're gonna be talking about the five biggest mistakes that photo business owners make. And I got this list because it was really the five biggest mistakes I made, but I see a ton of other people making them, so I think this video will be really helpful to you. Despite making these mistakes, I've been able to grow a business that this year in 2020, which was a tough year for photographers, did $2 million in revenue and has 20 full-time employees. So even if you are making these mistakes or have made them in the past, it's not the end of the world. You just know now that you shouldn't be making those in the future. Jumping straight into it, mistake number one is only focusing on improving your craft and only focusing on becoming a better photographer. A lot of industry advice says that if you become the best photographer out there or you improve your skill, that will directly improve your income. And while that's the case most times, what I've seen and what I've seen other photographers make mistakes doing is only focusing on that and thinking that will bring them business. The reality is as a photographer, you are a business owner. If you don't think like a business owner and realize that 50% is the quality of your craft and the other 50% is how good of a business person you are, it's gonna be a pretty tough road for you. So I always encourage people to think of themselves as a small business owner and invest in their business education. And investing in your business education doesn't mean spending money on coaches or going to business school. It just means thinking of yourself as a business owner and doing things to improve yourself as a business owner. One of the things for me that's, I guarantee you, more than anything paid for itself many times over is the time I've spent reading and learning about business. It's one of the easiest things you can do is pick up a good business book and learn it and think of yourself as a business person while you're doing it because even if you're reading it and this, you're like this vice you know really doesn't have anything to do with my business at the current time you never know what opportunity will come in the future I know there are a lot of books I've been reading where I'm like it doesn't really apply to me but then later in the future I'm like wait a second that I learned that back then this definitely applies to me now and so think of yourself as a business owner and reading and learning and listening to podcasts and whatever it is to grow your business is a great idea an hour invested learning more about business is going to pay you way more in the future than an hour spent learning about your camera and how to shoot better. Now, obviously you have to be at a certain point, but once that point is achieved, you have to learn more about your business if you want your business to grow. And speaking of business books, there's three books I recommend. If you haven't read them, you absolutely need to read them. It doesn't matter what your goals in business are, they'll really help you out, not only in business, but just in life in general. The first one, kind of got a scammy sounding name, but it's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's basically the fastest way you can learn human psychology in a way that applies to business, and it will help you right off off the gate in any relationship you have. That's How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Have to read that one. Number two, and this is kind of business, but kind of mindset in general, and will help you understand why you have a business is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Maybe you've already read that, it's a really famous book, but if not, you definitely have to read that. It will help you reframe your brain as an entrepreneur or as a business owner. And the next one, not my favorite out of all of them, but still a book I definitely recommend reading is Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. For some people, it completely changes their life and for others, it doesn't. But either way, it's worth putting in the few hours to read. And that way, you can take whatever advice you can out of it. The second biggest mistake that I see photo business owners making is not keeping track of their books and keeping track of their income and expenses. It's one of those things that most business owners aren't super excited about. We're in business to go get those contracts and shoot jobs and make money and we're like, okay, it's great, You know, we made it, why do we need to keep track of it? Whatever the reason is, a lot of small business owners don't do it, especially at the start, and it's one of those things that if you do it well from the start, it will make your business experience so much better, so much more organized, and will help you grow faster. Now, whether that means doing it yourself in a software like QuickBooks or hiring a CPA or bookkeeper, put effort into making sure you're at least the first year keeping track of your income and expenses. And then I always recommend people, as soon as they can afford the 75 to $200 a month, hire a bookkeeper to do your books for you every month, unless that's just what you love doing, because that will pay you so much in return, in the sense you'll be more organized, you'll be able to know where your business stands, and you'll be able to capture opportunities better, and not just have all this money coming in and all going out, and you not knowing anything what's going on with your business. Now, this may or may not be a big deal if you don't know what's going on with your business, but what I guarantee you is a big deal is if you forget to pay your taxes or get surprised by a massive tax bill. And the reason I can tell you that so definitively is because that happened to me my first year, and you'd think I would've learned after my first year, it happened my second year as well. Tax season came around the following year and I owed a massive amount of money on taxes, and I'm like, wait a second, I don't even have that much money, so I had to figure out a bunch of stuff, sell some gear, and pay my taxes. Don't make that mistake. If you have a CPA, if you have a bookkeeper, you keep track of it yourself, whatever the route you choose to go is, if you do that, you won't make that mistake and you won't owe all that money at the end of the year in an awful, surprise. So take that, if you take any advice from this video, keep track of your income expenses and make sure you know how much taxes you're gonna have to pay. Do not get 
surprised by it. When I was growing up, it was kind of a joke in our household. Whenever we talk about business as a family, my mom would always be like, oh yeah, make sure you know you gotta pay taxes out of that. Remember to pay your taxes. And I'd, it was so much, so it was a joke. I'd be like, oh yeah, mom's gonna say you gotta pay taxes when you make money. And it's like, yeah, great, you pay tax when you make money. I get all that. But then I forget to pay my taxes, even after that was made something that was popular to talk about in my family. So do this, if you do anything, make sure to keep track and make sure to pay your taxes. Don't get behind for a stupid reason. You know how much you're gonna owe if you keep track of your books, pay it on time. Mistake number three is not hitting the like button on videos like this. If you don't hit the like button, people don't see this video and people make these mistakes and their lives are worse. So if you don't mind, hit the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, we have a lot of videos coming like this that are from my experience growing my business that hopefully will allow you to not make the mistakes I did and therefore grow your business faster and more profitably. And the real number three is spending money on gear that doesn't matter for your business. A lot of people, because they believe mistake number one, which is that if their photos get better, they make more money, they think, okay, because that's true, if I spend more money on gear, I can make my photos better. And there's something there occasionally, you know, if a really game-changing piece of gear comes out that allows you to work faster or work that much better, it can be worth it. But for the most part, spending money on gear does not return extra money into your pocket. It actually just costs you money and makes your business overall in a less good spot. And a lot of people say, you know, the newest drone comes out, they buy it. The newest camera comes out, they buy it. It doesn't improve their business. At my company, Norman & Young, our photographers use the Canon M50 and the Mavic Air 2 as their drone. Those are not the most expensive pieces of gear. Frankly, they're closer to the cheaper pieces of gear, but we still generate hundreds of thousands of dollars using those pieces of equipment. And so don't think that you have to go buy the newest gear. Keep that money in your pocket. Most of us are photographers because of, it allows us two things. One, to do what we like for a job, but two, to make money doing it. So if you spend all your money back on gear, that's not going to help your business. It's going to set you up for failure. Mistake number four is allowing your lifestyle to creep up with your income. Now this one um, is something that no matter what someone says to you, you'll probably still do it at some level, but hopefully someone saying it will make you do it to a less painful level. And what this looks like is you're in July and you have a, for us, busy month is July. So let's say we're in July and you know, I made $18,000. And then I go out and I get a $6,000 mortgage and a $1,500 car payment and I go, great, you know, making 18,000 now, let's spend 13 of that per month on, on stuff and we can save the other bit. But then you get to December and November where you're making 4,000 and it's like, I can't pay my bills, what the heck am I doing? And it seems so straightforward, it seems like, duh, why would I do that? But I guarantee you, most people their first couple years in business, they make money, they spend it, their lifestyle increases. And before they know it, they've worked for five years and have nothing to show for it. I did that the first few years, I'd make more money, I'd go get a new Mercedes or something stupid. It's not to say you can't buy something if you like stuff. I like cars, so I'm not, um, it's not sad to me that I wasted that money. I enjoyed it. But you know, you don't need to do this in every area of your life, and it's not good to get yourself in a place where you could be in trouble come off season. For me, I was never in that place where I just didn't have enough in off season, but I may not have had anything to show for a certain year. And if you're working, you should be building up something to have for the future and to save for days where it's not as good. A good rule of thumb here to get specific about how you can not do this is it's good as a small business owner to budget off your least productive or your least profitable month. So if December, you know, you make 4,000 as a photographer, I would budget off of $4,000 because you know every other month you're gonna make more than that. So if you budget off of four, you'll be great. Now, budgeting off of four doesn't mean spending four. It means assuming you're gonna make four every month and then breaking up your income accordingly. You should be saving money and doing all the stuff that will help you prepare for your future because if you save, you can invest. If you can invest, your money grows without you having to work. It's one of those things you don't wanna to get to a place five years later where you've worked really hard to build a business and you have absolutely nothing to show for it. Now obviously, if you build a business, and we'll talk about this in mistake number five, you've built an asset, but you also wanna build up an asset outside of that business, just like you would if you worked another job where you have retirement accounts and stuff like that. Now not allowing your lifestyle to creep up doesn't mean you can't ever buy something that's stupid or that you really wanted. I'm a big car person and so this year I bought a $167,000 Mercedes G550. Now, a couple things I want to talk about around that purchase. Yes, that definitely made my lifestyle creep up. It was something I'd wanted for a while and I'd looked at and I got a good deal, believe it or not, despite having paid 170,000. But the other thing, because I had a CPA and because I'd like I talked about in the other ones, I keep track of my books, I was able to talk to that CPA and buy it in a way that it was a massive tax write-off for me because it's a certain weight or a certain weight rating as a vehicle. And so the another thing you can do by having that CPA in place, you can make decisions that improve your lifestyle but don't improve improve or don't increase how much you're spending and take away from how much you can save. Buying that Mercedes
Mercedes saved me a lot of money in taxes that I was able to then invest and spend on the car itself. So despite costing a ridiculous $170,000, it didn't nearly have the impact as if I went out and bought a $170,000 car that I couldn't deduct, period. Now obviously not tax advice, don't go buy a car and think you can write it off. Talk to your CPA, there are specific ways you have to do it. But that just shows that not letting your lifestyle creep up doesn't mean you can't ever buy something that you really like or enjoy. Mistake number five is not planning for the future. And this kind of shows itself in two different ways. The first one in kind of a defensive way is you don't have insurance. You don't think about could something happen and if that happens, am I gonna be covered? What happens if I you know, crash or burn down a house or something like that that is very unlikely to happen but could happen? If you don't plan for that and it happens, you could go out of business instantly. And so defensively, we wanna plan for the future by having liability insurance. I didn't do that the first couple of years because I thought it was gonna be expensive. I always heard people saying, oh, I have a million dollar policy. I'm like, oh geez, how much is that gonna cost? Didn't even worry about price shopping it. And then year three, I was like, probably should do that. And it was like $50 a month for my business. I had multiple employees at that point. So liability insurance is a great way you can defensively prepare for the future. And if you wanna spend a little more per month, you could always insure your gear in case it gets stolen or damaged or something happens to it. So insurance, I always recommend doing it. I had a lawyer once tell me that the best thing you can do to protect yourself is just get a good insurance policy. And when I found out they were 50 to $100 a month, it was an absolute no brainer. But on the offense, we obviously wanna prepare for the future, not just thinking about if something happens, but what if nothing happens and what if we have nothing to show for it in the future? So there's a couple things we can do there to prepare for the future. One, we could think about, and this is sort of defensive, sort of offensive, but what happens if you can't work? What happens if you break your leg or something happens where you can't work? Are you gonna be prepared or covered at all? Definitely wanna think about that, and that's why I recommend budgeting for your worst month and saving and investing all of the other money. Now, this doesn't mean you should sit there and live in fear as a business owner. It just means you should prepare and spend 3% of your time thinking about something that's probably never gonna happen, but if it does, you're covered, because if it does happen, that 3% of time was absolutely worth it. Additionally, and in more of the offensive side of things, when you're building a business, especially if you plan to scale in the future, or hire people, you're building an asset that you can sell. Now, it, there's no direct way to say how much your business is worth, but a lot of businesses sell for three times what they make in a year. So if you make $150,000, you could theoretically sell your business for 450,000. I don't know about you, but that's a great amount of money on something you already got paid for. You made money during those years, but then you could sell it at the end. But that doesn't really work if you're a single person business. And so preparing for the future can think about, okay, what do I wanna get out of this? Do I just want a yearly income? And am I really able, am I gonna save everything up enough to retire? Or do I need to think about being able to sell my business? And obviously this isn't advice for how to grow or sell your business, but you need to know that if you're gonna sell your business, it's really hard to sell a one person business. If you're gonna sell a business or get the most money for a business specifically, it needs to be a business that can run without you. And that's why in thinking about the future, you can say, maybe I don't really wanna scale, but maybe I really need to scale. Maybe I need to hire people and, and get people to shoot for me. That way, if something does happen or in the future, I'm able to sell my business. That's all for this video, guys. Those are the five biggest mistakes I see people making. Unfortunately, they're not that hard to not make if you know about them ahead of time. Go back. I highly encourage you to rewatch this video, write down those mistakes, and make sure that you at least have some plan in place to not make those as a business owner. If you do, you'll get a lot further than I did a lot faster. I made all those mistakes personally. It cost me money. It costs me time and it makes it so my business is smaller today than it could have been. Now again, like I said at the start, if you're making these mistakes, it's not the end of the world. I still have an absolutely amazing business that I'm really proud of. It just means I could have been a little bit further and so hopefully by watching this video, I can save you from making those mistakes. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, it means a lot to me if you do and more importantly, it means a lot to YouTube, meaning they'll show my video to more people. So if you haven't yet, like this video, subscribe to the channel. We have a ton more good stuff coming for you. I'll see you in the next one.